steps then as we come round to the top half of the circuit. And here into the second chicane, where drivers really are on the limit. And they're all safely through that as the field now begins to shape up. And with our camera angle just catching the field flowing through here. Focusing in there on number 25, but now back with the back markers, as you can see here. Overcast, cool and cloudy, but perfect conditions for racing. 15 laps scheduled in this Round 6 Formula 3 race. And there, as our cameras begin to pick them up, coming back round to the completion of lap 1. And the yellow car of Karl Wendlinger, the Austrian, is in the lead but absolutely nothing in it in the early stages as they come round then for the Sachs Corva for the completion of lap one. Wendlinger, winner at Abus in round four. And many people's tip to win this one. And he's the early pace setter then as they complete lap one. And there's somebody who's overdoing it. And that looks like, well, our camera just as it was getting interesting following the leaders. So we've rather lost that one for a second. I think it might have been the number 25, but we'll perhaps get a second chance to see that on the replay. So the field well bunched, the top eight then beginning to put a little daylight between themselves and the rest of the pursuing pack. And here we had the first mishap of the afternoon. Somebody's going backwards onto the grass. It's number 13, in fact, as we rejoin our race leader, Carl Wendlinger. Number 13 was Zarkovsky, but um, he's back in the race. No mishap to the car, but well down the field. On to lap two. And these guys now doing about close to 200 kilometers per hour, flat out. Most of these guys using VW engines, and uh, as we told you, turning over 2,000 cc's. And one of the rules of Formula 3 is that the cylinder block and the engine have to be from the same manufacturer. But apart from that, very lightweight machines indeed, and very, very fast. And here they come. It's still Wendlinger, but his position under threat now. Up alongside him is Frentzen in the blue car number 10, and it's Frentzen on lap two, who goes past Wendlinger and takes the lead. On the Sachs Kurve then, lap two of 15. Karl Wendlinger first away from the grid. The Austrians lead short-lived on the second lap. It's Heinz Harald Frentzen who goes past just about Two cars length ahead of Wendlinger, and he certainly won't give up that position easily, I should think, without a fight. The Austrian really is a battler, but now he's got to come from behind as Frentzen grabs the lead on lap two. Now that's an early retirement, one of the back markers. No damage to the vehicle, and looks as if He's just pulled off the side of the track there, putting the car in a safe position, and that's sensible. Race leader, Heinz Harald Frentzen, in the blue and white. Car number 10, behind him, the Austrian, Karl Wendlinger. And behind them, it looks like Kaufmann and Schumacher. And those four beginning to just get away from the rest of the pack. They come round to the devilishly fast chicane here, the second of two on this Hockenheim circuit. Number 11. Fastest round, in fact, as we see, not surprisingly, race leader, Frentzen. 184 kilometers, that means he's lapping at around 115 miles per hour. The Hockenheim circuit, which has been uh, improved over recent years, safety-wise. And um, here, amidst the dark, thick forests of southwest Germany, no fun for 
either fans or drivers when it's wet. Thankfully, that's not the case here today. A battle here between the number five. And we're concentrating once again with our German director on one or two of the back markers. It's still Fredson away on the far side of the track, leading by 1.2 seconds from Mendlinger as we enter lap three of 15 here at Hockenheim. Locking up his brakes there was Rosso. And as you can see, one or two of the boys just overdoing it a little bit there on the right-hander and uh, doing a little off-road racing there. This is race leader Fredson. That's Wendlinger, the bright yellow car of the Austrian, easy to spot. And it's Frenson who's beginning to edge away at the moment, and the gap is up to just under two seconds. Wendlinger now coming under pressure from Schumacher. Through the chicane, and tremendous piece of driving, and Wendlinger's down to third place. See it once again here on the replay. Wendlinger locking up the brakes, the puff of smoke there, forced really to uh, just hold back a little. And going through was the white car of number 11. And the number 11 here this afternoon is Willy Kaufmann. And he's up in the second place. Frenson Kaufmann. Wendlinger. And really driving right on the limit there as uh, Kaufmann gave it 10 tenths through the chicane, forcing Wendlinger to break sharply and through the German wet. So, early race leader, Karl Wendlinger now finding himself dropped down to third place. Frenzen leads from Kaufmann. Wendlinger in third. And it's Schumacher and these four now, as you can see, as we head up the far straight there, beginning to draw away from the rest of the field. Still, Heinz Harald Frenzen posts a new fastest lap here this afternoon, 184 kilometers per hour. Frenzen in his Reynard and the mechanics have done a perfect job in tuning him up to peak performance. The number two just going through your picture there. Schumacher back in fourth place. These are the leading four. Round six, don't forget, of the German Formula 3 series at Hockenheim. And race order on lap three is Frenzen. Kaufmann, Wendlinger and Schumacher and they're losing it as we come into the Sachs curve and it looks like hard to tell from here the number obscured and that may well have been a Rosso who we saw earlier on locking up his brakes it was indeed Rosso the Director may give us a second look at that a little later on. We're back, however, at the top of the field. And we're looking at the car of Karl Wendlinger, the Austrian, well up in the current championship points rating. He won round four. But it's been a very open Formula 3 series so far. We've had four different winners from five races. And that's Victor Rosso, who we saw spinning off at the Sachs Corp. And it looks as if his race is run. The mechanics don't seem to be in too much hurry there to get the cowling off. And the despondent Rosso accepts that his race here at Hockenheim is over. Back to chicane number two of two here. These guys attempting the minimum of braking as they go into it at close to 110 miles per hour. 
and then opening up into fifth and then six gears. The long straights of this wide D-shaped circuit allowing for maximum revs and maximum racing and we have a new fastest lap here from Carl Wendlinger. So that's the response from the Austrian who's dropped down from first to third after lap one and his message is clear to the boys in front. I'm coming back at you, 185 kilometers per hour around this 4.2 mile circuit. Close to 120 miles an hour he's lapping and he's still behind in third place and the car in front of him to get past if he's going to have another run at Frenson is Kaufmann. Race order remains there as we come round to lap 4 of 15. Heinz Harald Frenson leads from Kaufmann, then Wendlinger, who's just posted a new fastest lap here. And then Schumacher in car number 2. Protégé of Gerhard Berger, the Austrian, Karl Wendlinger, slipstreaming behind Kaufmann. This is the duel at the moment you're looking at for second place. And Fritzen now has built a lead of over three seconds ahead of these two. But this is the race we're focusing on at the moment, the race between second and third. And something that we missed while focusing on the leaders, that's what happens when you get it wrong here at the second of the two chicanes at Hockenheim. That's number 52, who finds himself up on the grass and out into the escape lane. No damage done here at Hockenheim, as we said earlier. Safety margins have been improved dramatically at this one of the fastest race circuits in the Federal Republic over recent years. Plenty of runoff areas, spectators well back from the action. And they need to be, and you can see the speed at which these boys are attacking that chicane there, right in front of our camera position. Hitting the curve hard. The ideal optimum line means, of course, the minimum of braking and precious tenths of a second will be gained on race leader, who is still Heinz Harald Frenzen here. They're on lap four. And we continue to focus in on the battle for second and third place. Still Kaufmann in the white car ahead of number 14, Wendlinger. Kaufmann, Wendlinger, Schumacher. Two, three and four. Ahead of you there at the top of your picture, race leader Heinz Harald Frenzen. And just coming into view there, at the bottom of your picture, is Schumacher. And a tremendous battle there between Kaufmann and Wendlinger. And the Austrians having a look. He's crawling all over the back axle of Kaufmann. And now he's up alongside Kaufmann. Is he going to get through? Locks up the brakes. My goodness me. He's clawing his way desperately covering all sides of the track to try and get past Kaufmann. But still it's Kaufmann who holds on to second place. A tremendous duel here at Hockenheim. Exhilarating stuff as Wendlinger. He's really got his tail up now. The Austrian who's found himself bumped back from first to third. Goes into the chicane. 110 miles an hour. These guys really are driving on the limit. We'll be right back with the conclusion of this race from Hockenheim. Join us after the break. Hockenheim, you rejoin us here halfway through the uh, race here, round six of the German Formula 3. And we rejoin that fascinating battle for second place between numbers 11 and 14. Look at that as they touch wheels. My goodness me, this is incredible stuff. And would you believe that? Kaufmann tells Wendlinger to back off. Did you see that? The red glove 
of Kaufmann there, clearly signals Wendlinger, you're getting too close as the two guys touch wheels and the cheek of it, he tells the Austrian, just get off my tail, will you? Well, let's hope our director gives us another chance to see that. That was absolutely incredible racing here. You rejoin us here as the action really bubbles. Someone gets it all wrong on the chicane there, hitting the curb with the uh, right wheel and totals it into the rubber tire wall there. And uh, well, that's one chassis that's gonna take a lot of straightening out. No damage done, but we're back here. And it looks as if Vendlinger's through. Vendlinger has taken Kaufmann. He has indeed, the Austrians back in second place. Regains second, and look at this once again, back comes Kaufmann. Darting, weaving, dodging, looking for a way through. And he's right up Wendiger's exhaust pipe as they come into the chicane. Now Wendlinger this time holds his line perfectly through the chicane. 115 miles per hour they're going through that chicane at. And uh, now it's Frenzen who leads three seconds ahead of Wendlinger. And here it is once again, that tremendous piece of action coming down towards the Saxe-Kurve there. Wendlinger on the right, the number 14, touches wheels there with Kaufmann. Look at that, keeps it under control. Back again they go, wheel arch to wheel arch. And there, Kaufmann's red glove signals to Wendlinger. Just get off my back, will you? Well, I wonder what these two will have to say to each other after the race. But at the moment, it's white hot action out on the tarmac. And Wendlinger it is who's got past Kaufmann to reclaim second place. Now then, how will Kaufmann react to that? That spoiler at the back beginning to look a little bit unsafe and un unsecure. It's wobbling about in uh, rather alarming fashion. But he certainly won't want to come into the pits as he finds himself dropped back to third place and suddenly it's Schumacher who's on his tail. And Schumacher going through, now then. Schumacher, the number two, had a look in the Reynard, trying to get past Kaufmann in the Dallara. That rear spoiler of Kaufmann really is beginning to wobble about all over the place and suddenly Kaufmann realizes it's Schumacher he's got up behind him now and has a look in the mirror. Someone else who's lost the back end of his car, <laughs> just checking that he's still got the front end there as well. Uh, no damage done, looks as if he is just the one car involved there and the stewards very quickly on the scene. Back to the race action at the top of the field and it's Frenson. He's held the lead since the second lap. Race order, Reynard, Dallara, Alpha Reynard. And that incredible duel we would had really since the second lap between uh, Willy Kaufmann and the Austrian Karl Wendlinger. Just a lap ago, almost coming to catastrophe when the wheels touch, not once but twice. And Kaufmann, the German, saying to Wendlinger, just take it easy, will you? And then Wendlinger darting through to reclaim second place. And it looks like Schumacher's going through. Wheel to wheel here with Kaufmann. He's up alongside Kaufmann. Now can he get past Schumacher on the right of your picture? He's not. He's back in behind Kaufmann's slipstream. And Kaufmann hangs on to third place. Wendlinger now beginning to put a little daylight between him and these two guys. Now suddenly the duel here at Hockenheim, which has got the crowd on their feet, is between the Dallara of Kaufmann and the Reynard of Schumacher for third place. And meanwhile, Heinz Harald Frenzen, oblivious to the dramas going on behind him. Schumacher once again has a look, tries to go through on the inside, and this time he's passed. Great driving from Schumacher, the Reynard of the blue and yellow car of Schumacher, the number two. And he dumps Kaufmann back down. Now in the space of one and a half laps, he's dropped from second to fourth. Schumacher then is through. He had a look for about three quarters of a lap here around this 4.2 mile circuit. And now Kaufmann finds himself down in fourth place. but not for long, because he's got it back. Kaufmann battling back, and he's passed Schumacher once again, so the race order is still Frenzen. Then comes Wendlinger. Once again, it's Kaufmann back in third, Schumacher's back in fourth. And 
we really have had some superb race action here. Schumacher coming back again. Coming into the chicane. Look at that tremendous driving. And Kaufman's lost it. Kaufman's off. Keeps it going. Well, he did tremendously well there to keep it going. But he'll have gravel. He'll have stones. He'll have mud. He'll have all the garbage from off track there in his wheels. Possibly, but hopefully not in the Carburetta. But look at that piece of driving from Schumacher, absolutely superb. Took the chicane at full tilt, tricked Kaufman. He just touched the, uh, the wall of tyres there with the right rim, and that was enough to take him off into the escape lane. Kept it going over the grass, but you can see the stones bouncing up there, and no driver likes to be there rallying off track. He wants to be back on the tarmac, and he'll need, I should think, at least half a lap to just shake the stones out of his tyres and uh, get his race machine back to optimum performance. Tremendous drama there. Well, what an overtaking manoeuvre by Schumacher coming into the second of the two chicanes here. And we've already seen drama in this race at that very point. And Kaufmann so very nearly losing it. Now race order for you here at Hockenheim. It's Frenzen who leads in the Reynard. Second is Carl Wendlinger, and these two beginning to look quite secure and solid up front. A race perhaps just between those two now for the chequered flag. Schumacher, who's finally got into third place ahead of Kaufmann, and he's lost valuable time, having flirted with the grass there, as we saw on the last lap. This the Austrian we're looking at, Wendlinger in the yellow Dallara and the Alpha, I beg your pardon, the Rolf Alpha. One of the most open racing seasons in many, many years here, the German Formula 3 circus, which started at this very circuit back in April and has since been around the Nürburgring in the Eiffel, where crowds turn out in their thousands to follow motor racing of all categories here in the Federal Republic of Germany. And here we are back once again in Hockenheim. We're with round six of the current 1989 season and we're looking at the race leader. Frentzen in fact comes in to take the checkered flag. Well they finished it on lap 14. A lap early, 14 then run of 15. Frensen it is who wins, and wins comfortably. He led from lap two, takes the salute from the crowds. The pits delighted down below us, and it's Heinz Hald Frensen who wins a round six of the German Formula 3 series for 1989. A worthy winner too, no doubt about the result, as he led virtually from lap one, but all the drama as three cars jockeyed for second, third and fourth. And that's how it finished because Billy Kaufman, of course, almost coming to grief at the chicane, losing valuable time in the closing stages passed by Bartels, Isla and Bieler.